She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her Right, so hello, my name is Jade Rose. When it comes to this kind of stuff, you know, sweets, chocolates, donuts, the problem was for me, it was never just one. It ended up being two, three whole packets. There are many reasons why you might be watching this uh, or you might want to quit sugar. Could be poor concentration or, you know, weight loss or, just many things, but for me, I felt like my mind or my life was being controlled by cupcakes and like dictated by donuts. And I felt like I was always indulging and I could see that other people weren't like that. They didn't have to always indulge. And I admired that kind of discipline. I had never had that kind of discipline ever in anything that I ever did, to be honest, at that point. So I think, it was good for me to realize that I wanted something like that. Surface level, the reason why I wanted to stop eating so much sugar is because I wanted to lose weight. But the real reason was because I needed this discipline. And the second reason, and another very, very valid reason for me, was because diabetes ran in my family and I just, I didn't want that for myself. I didn't want my life to also be controlled by my genes and my inherited, you know, just, I wanted to make decisions for myself. I wanted to carve out a life for myself. Today, I wanted to share some tips with you for building some good healthy habits to stop you from, you know, craving sugar all the time. Now, the first tip I have is drinking lemon water or tea is good as well. Like just something that is quite refreshing and hydrating, but has a kind of sweet taste that isn't necessarily like too sweet, it really dulls those sugar cravings, whether you're drinking it like, you know, just to have it, because I would just drink it in the morning, throughout the day, or when you're drinking it at the exact time where you're having the cravings and you decide to drink it instead. It makes a massive difference. I love the taste and it kind of replaced drinking Sprite for me. I used to always drink, you know, the cans and those had like a lot of sugar in them. So they were, that was like a good kind of substitute for me as well. The next thing, right, if you can master this, this will change everything. And it is having that self-awareness, practicing that self-awareness and practicing like how to be objective about your thoughts, about your actions, looking at them in a non-judgmental way, in a non-emotional way, and just having like an objective point of view about what's happening. So let's say I am sitting here in the living room and then I think to myself like, oh, like I really want a chocolate bar. There's a chocolate bar in the kitchen and I really want this chocolate bar. There were times where I would think, okay, quickly, let me just go get the chocolate bar because I knew that there was like some part of my mind that would stop me and be like, hey, do you really need this chocolate bar? Practicing self-awareness made me realize that I had that, right? So I would slow it down. When I could feel myself getting like really like agitated and fast and really wanting to, you know, eat something fast and go fast, I would stop myself and be like, wait, What's happening here? Another like instance might be like, if you're also trying to figure out whether you should have something or not, and you're kind of having an internal battle within your mind. I would literally have like, should I, shouldn't I? As if it was like the biggest, most important decision of the whole day. And by stopping and kind of looking at this situation from a, another point of view, it just made me realize how little and silly and random the situation really is. The decision of whether to, you know, go and have some cookies or not was such a small decision in my whole day compared to all of the amazing things that happened in my day. Having this self-awareness made me realize if I go and eat the cookie, the likelihood that the next day I would be like, oh, why did I eat that cookie? is high and then it kind of just took away the the fun out of the whole day instead of thinking about all the great things that happened the day before i was thinking about oh, i shouldn't have had that cookie so whenever i started to feel like i was having that internal battle i would just stop in the moment and say you know what it's not worth it it's not worth me going into the next day and thinking like oh why did i eat that because it was it just puts a negative vibe on the day another thing i realized practicing self-awareness is that there's always tomorrow i was able to kind of think to myself how i would really enjoy this tomorrow and I'm still gonna have this. It's still gonna be in my life. I'm still going to be able to enjoy whatever sweets are in front of me, but I will have it tomorrow and I will number one, enjoy it. And then number two, I'm like spreading it out. I can spread it over the course of the week and still 
feel happy and still feel like I'm still able to have those things. Rather than feeling like I'm never gonna have this or I cannot have it at all. My next tip is talking to someone. And when I say talking to someone, I mean to a therapist, you know, and I know that that can be expensive in some cases, but today I've partnered with BetterHelp who are sponsoring this video. They do online therapy. They're affordable, they're easy, and they're the world's largest therapy service. They're 100% online. They're licensed professionals that can help you with so many different types of problems, and they can help you build the tools to be able to have that kind of self-awareness I was talking about in my last point. So if you do have trouble with that, if you do have trouble with stopping yourself and you know really thinking about what you want the future those kind of things a therapist can really help you and this is the therapist that you can text call zoom call you can talk about family relationships self-improvement so not just this kind of stuff so if you'd like some help if you'd like some encouragement some accountability i mean that's what i kind of use it for just to have someone to hold me accountable you can get 10 percent off with my link in my description box you can click that link or you can go to betterhelp.com slash Jade Rose. So it's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash Jade Rose. So thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I avoid kind of banning whole food groups like carbs or, you know, fats or whatever. But with sugar, I did actually not eat sugar for a long time. And I do actually think that cutting out sugar, even if it's just for a few weeks, can help you if you feel like it's just what you're eating all the time and you feel like you always crave sugar. Deciding to just stop eating it, and technically I did eat some because I had like, you know, hot sauce and ketchup and all that kind of, I mean, that kind of stuff has, you know, sugar in it, Chinese food. I stopped eating it for a while so I could force myself to enjoy more savory things, not just sweet things. I wanted to kind of, I guess, train my taste buds a bit more and, you know, eat different things, not just sweets and chocolate and maybe bread sometimes. In the beginning of my weight loss journey, this was my goal, you know, I stopped eating sugar and I portion controlled. So actually I didn't change my diet at all in the beginning, but it was because I really wanted to concentrate on the sugar and on this specific problem because I knew that that was, you know, the root cause of my problem. So yeah, I was still eating pizza at the time and all of that kind of stuff, maybe portion controlling a bit, but Honestly, it was the sugar that I really wanted to, you know, get over first and then maybe look at my diet and see how I could improve. This tip is pretty simple. It's just not buying them, you know, if it's not in your house, it's out of sight, it's out of mind, it's out of reach. But of course you can still enjoy them in other environments in times where you wouldn't necessarily sit mindlessly eating or you know emotional eating on the sofa or in your bed or whatever instead at times where you consciously have chosen and it's fun and it's something that you can enjoy with other people so like i would do things like have ice cream you know when i'm out and about with my sister on a hot day or I would, you know, have a donut at the shopping center when I was going shopping with my mom, ordering desserts at restaurants. You know, in these situations, you can't really indulge that much. I mean, that little bit, but you can't go overboard. I mean, you could, I guess you could go back and have, you know, multiple desserts, order multiple desserts, but it's just unlikely for you to do. Money-wise, I would be like, do I really wanna spend five or eight pounds on another dessert? Another tip which won't work for everyone, but I think it's worth trying, is candles, like sweet scented candles. When you, I know it sounds weird, but when you burn them, you're smelling the sweet taste and it's like you've eaten it. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's like you've already eaten it. Or if it's quite a strong candle, the sweet taste will actually make you feel a bit sick <laughs> and you won't want to eat any sweets at all. Substitutes. So at first I always thought like I need to not eat substitutes. I used to always get things like, I don't know, these like 90 calorie brownie things. Like a, it was like fake, I don't know if it's fake chocolate, but I don't know, it was just not, not as much sugar as a normal chocolate bar or something. I would end up eating like three of them because I would see it as, oh, like this is a healthy version so I can eat more of them, right? And it, not right. I didn't think it was really good for me. So I stopped with the substitutes, but I will say the substitutes that really do work that I found like, okay, this really works for me personally is fruit, of course, because it's got the natural sugars. So it's not like, 
It's sweet, but it's like a healthy, sweet alternative. And then also protein shakes. So with the fruit, I always like, I always opt for fruit that is like juicy, you know? Again, like it's that combination of the hydration and a bit of sweetness that I think really, really helps with sugar cravings. For me, it just really satisfies me. Things like nectarines, watermelons, strawberries, just the juiciest, you know, fruit with high water content. And then the protein shakes, again, I think it's the hydration with a bit of sweetness and it kind of works for me. Obviously you need to check the actual protein to make sure it's, you know, not high in sugars. And if you add a lot of ice to the protein shake, like just pop that in the blender and blend it up, it's like having a really, really good milkshake. So those are, those are substitutes that I feel like I'm unlikely to overindulge. And even if I was to overindulge, it wouldn't be so bad, you know? Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Make sure you check out the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp at betterhelp.com slash Jade Rose, or you can click on the link in the description box. I will see you in the next video. So